Uh, so I guess we'll just keep the same order. I'll start. Um, how many do you have on your list, Rick? <laughs> Rick gonna say Spooderman. <laughs> <laughs> Spooderman. <laughs> um, I think you have, five? have four. I mean, I could say I have five. Okay, then we'll just okay, okay. Then we'll just keep it the same order. All right. Um, my number five game of the year, favorite game of the year, uh, for as much <laughs> shit as I talk about it, and I will never stop talking shit about the problems I have with this game. Uh, my number five is Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, you, if you would have told me four months ago that this game might be your most disappointing game of all time, but you're still going to like it, I would have said, you're full of shit. There's no way that the sequel to one of my favorite games I've ever played is going to be the most disappointing game I've ever played. Yeah. Um, mm. But it was. But it's held together... By an amazing story, amazing characters, t- uh, terrific writing, um, really feeling immersed in the world, even when the controls, even even though I constantly felt like I was fighting with the controls, um, I still managed to have fun with this game. A lot of it. About 80 hours worth of it. Okay. And the story alone is fucking <clears throat> amazing. Like... This game having the name Red Dead Redemption earns that name way more than the first game. Um, but I still think the first game is a better game than this game. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> all the stuff you... like, And I've talked about it on here before and it feels like the first um, <clears throat> 80% of that game, they do nothing but shit talk the character you played as in the first game since this is a prequel. All they do is cut him down. For like 80% of the game. In service of you liking your main character. But I felt so strongly about John Marston in the first game. That that detracted from for me. But not enough to where I said fuck this game and stop playing it. I played this game three or four hours a night. For like three weeks straight until I finished the story mode. Did all the side stuff. Didn't get any of the hidden stuff or like the easter egg stuff like that. Yeah. I came into contact with a couple of those things. But... Um, I didn't like go out of my way to find all that stuff. Um, but yeah, man, the story and the music and the, the ambiance of the world, the difference in the areas. Cause like in the first game, it's just like, it, it felt like a huge map that first game, but it's literally just, there's some plains and then there's some mesas. So there's not a lot of greenery. There's it's a lot of browns and a lot of sand and a lot of dirt. This game has that, that it has a large city that's sort of like a New Orleans style city Mm -hmm. in 1890. And then it's got a bunch of smaller towns. It's got mountains. It's got swamps. It's got any kind of environment you can think of, it has. Mm -hmm. And the exploration, like, um, at first I was really put off by the speed of the game. It wanted you to take your time. But I did the only logical thing, and I grew his hair out and grew his beard out and found all the clothes I could find to make him look like 1989 Undertaker. <laughs> and when and then when I was slowly walking through a town, it, it felt real because he looks like the fucking Undertaker. <clears throat> yeah. And uh, I played the majority of that game that way. Then there was a point where I made him look like Walker, Texas Ranger, which was <laughs> super fun. <laughs> And without spoilers... Do you have a picture of that? I want to see that. Yeah, I think I might. I think I might. I switched him back to looking like The Undertaker, and boy, am I glad I did. Boy, am I glad I did. Um, But yeah, it's number five on my list, and I'll just get it out of the way right now. It's my number five favorite game of the year, but it's also the most disappointing game of the year. Yeah. I, I'm struggling. It's good to hear the positive stuff about it, but hearing so many people be disappointed in that game and it being my first foray i guess into red dead yep. uh it I, I wrestle with like it makes me not want to play it even though i you know we're all about forming your own opinion and i've done that i've been playing um i've been playing uh what was i saying i've been playing it and yeah. what i've been playing i've enjoyed i haven't played much yeah. and i feel like that's where i struggle you just need to sit down for a night and yeah play for four or five hours i think it'll start to click and I hate saying that. It's not a slow burn. It is slow. Yeah. And it's slow on purpose. Mm-hmm. And the speed, like I said, it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Um, 
Can I not to cut you off? Yeah, I'm gonna right. I'm gonna end something that's in the chat real quick. Rick Rick's trying to address it, but it, regardless of what you like, with the way we're doing our list, it just if it's your first time experiencing the game, it could be on your list for this year. It doesn't matter if it came out in 2018 right. or not. So because right. they were talking, didn't Fortnite come out in 2017, and then talking about Paladins and uh-huh. all this other stuff? It's like it doesn't matter. You know, it doesn't have to be strictly 2018. Okay. So. Yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah, it's fantastic. Yeah. I really think you should keep plugging away at it. Yeah. But I, I, I don't know if I mentioned this on the air, but like I feel the same way with you right now that I did when you picked up Guitar Hero Three, and we're like, this is this is great, and I was like, yeah, except the charts are out of sync, the guitar sucks. And it's basically been done better three times before this with Guitar Hero, Guitar Hero 2, and Guitar Hero Rocks the 80s. But since this is your first experience with it, you're absolutely loving it. Right. But it's fucking inferior to the previous experiences. Yeah, okay, I remember now, that conversation. Now, that being said, I don't think it's going to be as... For me, I'm not going to be as like obstinate about it being a way inferior experience. It's not as good of a game as the first one. But the story is so goddamn good, man. Like, just... Yeah. And I'm not going to say keep plugging away like it's a chore. Get on that path, man, and just yeah. start going. Because you'll you'll find stuff you right. love. I'm not throwing in the towel. Like, it's not that... And I'm not saying I'm going to... Yeah, I'm not saying I'm going to quit on the game. Mm. But... And I, and I don't want to just steal from them because I feel like we quote them a lot. But, like, Greg Miller kind of said this. Where he would wrestle with wanting to go back into that world. And it's not that I don't, but I just... I kind of want to play Celeste, or I kind of want to play this game, Mm -hmm. or that game. Mm -hmm. That's what happens. But when I do sit down and play it, I like it, and I have fun with it, but I'm just like, it. I just, for some reason, can't bring myself to do it all the time. But when I do, it's good. Get those headphones on, So I just have to do that. I just have to do it. Yeah. So what's your number five, Rick? Um, Well, I was asking, because Paladins apparently came out this year for the Switch. For the Switch, yeah. Um, it also didn't come out free to play on Switch until September, which I think was like a month and a half or two right. months after it came out on Switch. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Your number was, five game could be from 2008. If you just experienced it now. Like, yeah, this is... It's... Yeah, yeah. go ahead. It, then I'll put Paladins as number five. Okay. Um, I liked that a lot. I, like, at first I didn't like it. I was yeah, like, yeah. Eh, yeah, yeah. You know what? It's but like, I kept, I I kept on him. I was like... But you, you kept saying it. And get then, into the training mode. Find a character you like. And eventually I did. And I'm like, yeah. Hey, that bad. And yeah. I kept playing it more. Like, oh, okay, it's all right. And then I ended up playing it more than I thought. I was then he played. Play he played. He played a few times with me. And I played with you. And, and then, I think that's the, the yes. course. It's it's fun when you play with someone. You know. And then I was. He saw like my stats from that match. He's like, "Holy shit!" Yeah. <laughs> Is there a chat thing or you nothing? No, no, we okay. just use Voxer. Yeah. <clears throat> but we could probably use um, Discord or something on our phones or whatever. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but yeah, it, uh, it's, it's definitely a fun game. I found the one that I like the most. Yeah, and uh, yeah, I, I enjoyed it. I like yes. it. Yes, I've and, been pushing um, that game on everybody. And yeah, it's, it's, free, yes. it's free on the Switch right now. And um, yeah, I will put that then. I guess as number five. Number five. I can't see your list. Oh, I'm what? looking at your face. What's your number five? Uh, my number five is actually a game uh, that I just started playing like a week ago. <clears throat> And uh, uh, it doesn't have the best. I'm. Just- <laughs> I wanted you to believe so hard that I was gonna say the messenger, but I'm not. I'm not gonna say the messenger. I should have held that on for longer because I could. I started to see it on your face. Uh, it's a game. It's a Bryce game because it's a point and click adventure, and it's called Unforeseen Incidents. It did come out this year. It came out in May 24, 2018, and. Uh, I'm not super far along into it. I've been playing it a lot. Yeah. But uh, I, I could tell, like, from what I've gathered, this is a really big, old-style point-and-click game That's with cool. with updated, you know, with, with updated, like, this is the, these are the visuals, like, it looks really cool. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah, like, the art style is really interesting. Oh, wow. It looks like that. And full-on, like, you know, yeah. full-on voice, all that stuff. And I'm really enjoying it. It's It's the... It's the first adventure game in a while, point and click game in a while, where I'm just like, that that isn't from some prior property that I already know or from or a, a, a creator or, or a yeah. person. Right. Where I'm just like, wow, like, this is awesome, and I love getting sucked into that world. And the voice acting is really good so far. I really like the game. It's from uh, the developers are Backwoods Entertainment. I don't know what else they've done. Uh, uh, let's see where they're 
from? They are from Germany. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's my number five. I okay. like that game a lot so far. So right. I'm very happy that I finally pulled the trigger. It was a Christmas present, so. That's cool. All right. Number four um, was number three for a little bit, uh, but then got bumped to number four. And uh, the game is Detroit Become Human. That number is, four. yeah, number four. It is <clears throat> one of the best, it's the best game that Quantic Dream has ever made, period. Including uh, Indigo Prophecy, Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, and this. This took <clears throat> everything from those three experiences and put them together. And finally, I think, finally realized the goal they've been trying to realize for the past, you know, 15 Feels that years. Way. Yeah. You know? <clears throat> it was an awesome story. Um, I love that it can end so many different ways, so many different points for so many different people uh, that play it. I really enjoyed playing it after you guys and seeing the stats. And <clears throat> there was a couple of times where I did something and I was the only one of us three that did it. And I was like, how the fuck did these guys not do it this way? Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it's just... Um, I had that with Rick a lot. I didn't see you. Because, uh, yeah, but with it's Rick, I had that quite a bit. A fantastic piece of storytelling. Um, I feel like if this game was made by any other studio, it would have been everybody's game of the year. Um, oh, a controversy. But because it's David Cage and Quantic Dream, uh, it got slided everywhere. Fucking everywhere. This is one of the best looking games to come out this year. It's one of the best stories to come out in video games this year. <clears throat> the actual gameplay is fun and feels less. Um, I kept we kept talking about Heavy Rain, and I kept saying like that was the evolution of like old style adventure point and click adventure games. This game finally doesn't feel like that anymore at all. Yeah, this feels like its own thing and its own genre. And if this was made by the company that made um, Until Dawn, this would have been everybody's game of the year. Garrett fucking teed. Really? Yep. Guaranteed. <clears throat> Wait, what, do you, what, what part of that? Because I'm not, I'm, I'm not really that? too f aware of the Quantic Dream backlash. It's been for a long time since like Heavy Rain. People, because you guys are more into the news than yeah. I am. Yeah, so people don't like the it, way so. David Cage writes, um, but he writes like he's writing summer blockbuster movies. Mm -hmm. There's people don't like that? No, they don't. Well, they, they knock them for that? They, that's they get one to of the, the heart reasons. of it. Tell them the big thing well, that Well, the big out. thing that came out this year was that they were saying, like, um, a lawsuit was filed. Oh, not even a lawsuit. A report was filed in a newspaper that there were, you know, uh, unsavory-like work conditions and frat boy uh... mentalities and this and that. And, like, every time that that has come up somewhere, like, they came up with Riot Games this year who did uh, League of Legends. Is that what they do? Mm, they do one of those MOBAs. <clears throat> um... But then, like, they come out and go, we're aware of the situation, we're suspending him, he's going to sensitivity training. David, like, they were accusing David Cage of being homophobic, of being racist. Not, not the people that work at his company that were possibly perpetrating the shit going on. They, they immediately wanted to blame him because people don't like him because of the way he talks about the way, his stories and the way he writes and the way he designs games. So there's already a predisposed dislike for this guy by people in the journalistic field of video games. And any time any kind of controversy circles around, they take it off of the people that are responsible and immediately, boom, pass it up to him. Like, it's okay. his fault. All right, I, I, didn't, I wasn't too aware of that. Yeah. So he came out and was like, look, we, we found out about some stuff that was happening. It was nowhere near as bad as this report. We've already nipped it in the bud. We've already gotten rid of those people. Mm -hmm. And I feel like a lot of this stuff is slanderous. And I'm filing a lawsuit against this newspaper and whoever reported it. But that's not a cool story. The we took care of it, it's gone now, our culture's not like that, and I am defending myself and my company vehemently. That's not a fun story. The fun story is he is a homophobic racist and a misogynist. Right. And so that's the fun story. And this oh, all came mm, out mm, before mm, the game came out. Before like, the literally like, like, like a week oh, before oh, the game oh, came out. Gotcha, before. gotcha, okay. But if this was a different company, it would have been game of the year because I've heard people talk about it out of the side of their mouth. And how yeah. much they liked it, but, but, but they don't want fuck to fuck David it. Cage. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I don't know if I'd say it'd be game of the year. I think it'd be a lot higher on people's lists. I think, <clears throat> I'll say that. I th okay, okay. Well, not everywhere, but there would have been there a been lot some of places that would have given this game of the year. Did Colin stick? Because for a while he was calling that. This game was of the number year. two. 
I think it was number two. I didn't watch it because you just put up a yeah. video. I didn't watch it yet. Okay. It was number two for him, I think. Number okay, two, number three. It's just me, I guess, being more <coughs> familiar with the news as far as gaming companies and things like yeah. that. But I wasn't right. sure if you were reacting yeah. more to being surprised that people would call it Game of the Year because I was like, wait, you like Detroit. Well, no, no, yeah. yeah I mean, but no, it was the news. Got it, got it, So to get away from that negativity and get back onto what this game does right, it does, it does nuance really well. Um, there's a lot of stuff you can miss if you're not really paying attention. This is one of the first well games. Well organized with the flow charts. Yeah. It's well organized. This is one of the first games in a long time. Not that I do this, but I know a lot of people do this. When a cutscene starts or when downtime starts, they pick up their phone. This is one of the first games in a long time where if you do that, you're you completely can fucked. And <laughs> well, you especially you especially can't do that in most of these games because right. then you might miss a prompt. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> but even in the story, in the scenes where you know this is just exposition, you yeah. can still miss stuff if you're not paying attention. Yeah. Um, but yeah, my story ended out in a really nice way, in a really positive way. Um, I played the characters... Uh, Usually in games like this, like I'm like, oh, what would I do? But I spent the first few chapters, like they want you to, getting to know these characters. And then I played the game the way I thought those characters would play out the game. Yes, with a little bias towards what I would do as well. But for the first time in a Quantic Dream game, it wasn't about how would Mike do this. Mm -hmm. It was about how would characters. Connor do this? Yeah. How would Marcus do this? How would Connor do this? Do I jive with that? Yes or no? And if it's something where it's like, ah, not at all, then maybe I would flip the other way. But even if I was at odds with what I was doing, for the most part, I still did it because I played it like those characters. For the most part, I kind of almost played it that way, too. <clears throat> but then as it progressed and the story progressed, I started <coughs> changing. Yeah, you started putting your own. Yeah. yeah. So that's my number four. It's a fantastic kinda, game. It, so to touch on something about like the evolution of the, the game and stuff, I uh, what I liked about it, just because sometimes I just find this stuff annoying... I like that there wasn't so much like quick press X then circle then whatever and that was there, that was there. But when it was there, it wasn't overdone and it was laid back. And like there's times where it's, just, it's fucking twister on your controller. It's like, wait, you want me to do fucking I'm yeah? Like, heavy no. rain was definitely like yeah. Mm. Uh, okay, right. <coughs> um, and then yeah, like it's funny. Like I, I always you know a lot. You hear a lot of wrestlers say this that they think it's more fun to play a heel. Yeah. Than a, than a baby face. Right. But I do find that when I play games like this, I decide to do the right thing. Right. Which is funny because, like, a part is like, well, it's a game. Why not just be an asshole? You know, why not? But I end up <laughs> something in me because I guess I'm inher inherently, I feel like I guess I'm a good person. You humble, know, humble despite bride. what some humble people bride. would say. Uh, and so I just, that's how I do it. I, I don't think I ever thought I'm going to play like how I think this player is. Right. I think I just always tried to do what I thought was right. the right thing. That's cool. That's how I did it. Number four. Right, my number four is Pokemon Let's Go. Really? Okay, cool. I mean, I, I expected it to be on the list, yeah. but... I, I like. I feel like he was waiting for me to have a reaction, but <clears throat> I've seen how little you've actually played that game, so I, I knew it wasn't some, high on your list. I played some last night uh, and traded with Ben. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice, okay. Um, we had a full-on conversation talking and trading. Nice. And, uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, yeah, I like the game a lot. It's pretty much, like I said before when I was talking about it, uh, you know, the first two Game Boy games yeah. just revamped and the graphics are amazing. And then trading, when I like, I just traded last night, Pokemon's with Ben. Yeah. And uh, the trading of it, the graphics uh, is... Pokemans. <laughs> the trade, when we traded, the graphics look exactly, <clears throat> really similar to like the Link Cables. Oh, really? Like the, nice. The Game okay. Boy. So like, it's like a tube and it takes the Pokemon you see oh, that's go. That's really cool. Yeah, and then because um, he needed some evolutions, and when you yeah. trade, they evolve. Okay. So um, we did that. Man, so I, wouldn't it be nice if the Switch had like a system wide overarching like voice chat system? I mean, it Man, fucking should. That'd be cool. That'd be <laughs> but, real cool. So yeah, that was a lot of fun <laughs> doing that last night. He gave me because um, uh, he already beat the. He, this is all he needed to beat the game. Yeah, to complete his Pokedex. Yeah. yeah. So um, he sent, he sent me some of his. And he's all about that game. Yeah, yeah he's got the ball yeah. and everything. <laughs> yeah, he was telling me. He about was that selling me on the ball. I'm like, dude, I need to tell Rick this stuff because I think Rick should have it. But... Yeah, he kept telling. But me. he's like, I don't even like Pokemon, but I'm gonna go yeah. get this ball. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm probably gonna. You have up... the game, no, but I got this ball. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna end up buying the ball because he told me that you can get um, Mew to or Mew. From it's the only way to get. Yeah. yeah, there you go. So I'm gonna end up buying that. Okay. But yeah, uh, it's a lot of fun. Now keep it real. Ben didn't buy the ball because he thinks it's awesome and revolutionary. It's the only way to get Mew. 
That's why he bought the ball. But he was really he was really talking up the ball. Like well, regardless of yeah. what his reasons were, once he had it, he liked yeah. the ball. He loves balls. <laughs> okay. All right. So that's number four. That's number four. You good? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. okay. Another thing that I want to say about my uh, <gasps> about my list in general, last year I feel like was was worse. <coughs> uh, but I feel like there might be games on this that would maybe be higher if I spent more time with them. I yep. do feel like I played. I can, I at least completed there's, more games this year. There's one on my list that that you feel like would be higher if you had more time with it. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah. So like my list, I feel like is mostly accurate. Okay. But I mean, I feel like there's games on here that I'm like, well, I didn't play this long enough or that long enough. Uh, <clears throat> but still, this is my list. And my okay. This is my list. Uh, my number four is the Messenger. Yeah. How much should we play? I haven't played that much. So you haven't even got to the best part. Well, I have definitely haven't gotten to that, but I, I, I've definitely, I've played enough. How good does that platforming feel? It's awesome. And I like the game a lot. And I'm going to do some, I'm going to nip our music thing in the bud right now. Cause this is what, I'll, this is what I will say. I feel like the messenger and Celeste scratch different itches. Okay. I feel like the music is different. <clears throat> like Yes, it is. Because I is. feel like the messenger music, what is, what did I, I had an example of what I thought it reminded me of, like a, a good thing, but different, like more 80s I've, kind of whatever, whereas <laughs> Celeste is more Modern. ambient and <laughs> moody and still has that retro sound. So I don't want to sit here and say, well, what's, what, which one's right, better than the other? Because right, I feel right. like it's different. different and I thought that sure. immediately when yeah. I played it. I was like, okay, like, I'm not going to... If you want to keep arguing that, we can, but there, I'm, like, I'm not going to argue it. There was never a time where I, like, immediately, as soon as a level starts and the beginning of a song would start, they put a smile on my face before I even started moving. In no, the messenger. yeah. And with Celeste, every time a level starts and a music starts, it definitely... You, so they're similar in the way that they make you feel something right away well, to where you kind of know what you're getting into right, right away. But yeah, they're they're different. They scratch different edges for sure. I mean, it's it's like it's yeah, it's like the music that you hear in the background for like I don't fucking know what a good example would be like for like a playing like a Street Fighter or a Final yeah. Fight or something versus like playing something like how I like the music in Little Nemo's yeah. Dream. World the the shop whatever. music in the Messenger is like because it's yeah, it's awesome. <clears throat> there's none after the first time, but when you walk in and the way. Like I, like I was saying, like, the best use. Because it's the way they do audio tricks with the music. Like, as it fades out when you go into a different screen. And the water stuff. the water stuff. stuff it's, like, it's phenomenal. <clears throat> it, is, it, it is awesome. But different. I remember. Yes. Messenger music reminds me of Mega Man stuff. Like, okay. it's more that fast pace. Yeah. That kind of thing. Where there's a ton of games that came out, like, on mm-hmm. NES and the old systems that Celeste sounds like, too. Like, yes. it's just, it's different. So I, it's, They scratch different itches. The stuff with the messenger and the way the music hits, it makes you want to start moving right away. Yeah. Like, you're like, okay, let's, let's fucking do this. And with Celeste, it's more like, you know that once you start moving, you can't fucking stop. But the music serves in a way to where you can sit there and look at it for a second. And figure before out. Before you feel like, no, yeah. I gotta boom, 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 boom. Yeah. Yeah, so different stuff, man. It, it's different. So, like, in the same way, like, how I bitch about when you guys say, do your top five albums of all time or whatever. And I'm just like, I don't fucking want to pick. That's how I feel about the music for these games because it's it's different. It's yeah. different beasts, like, entirely. I'm like, oh, but but from the same seed. So you have your cloud. <laughs> you know what yeah. I mean? You have from, your cloud dash already, right? Where yes. you can re- replenish your jump after you strike something in the air. Yes. Okay. <clears throat> That's where it really starts to get interesting. I've done stuff. So I'll have to look. Yeah. I, I've definitely upgraded stuff. Yeah. And so yeah, uh, but I I haven't played. I love how small enough of it. and how basic the skill tree is. Yeah, yeah. You it's... could fill up any. I, I I'm planning on filling up probably all of it. Yeah. I feel like you probably could. So, uh, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> Thank you. You uh, But yeah, like that's what I immediately thought. I'm like, okay, like no, I don't feel like this is an argument that I want to have because I just think it's, yeah, it's, it's different. Completely it's completely different. different. But they're from the same era. I'm so glad you started playing it's that from game the same era. Oh yeah, I, I think I played it that night. I think I think we'll have another discussion about this game after you get farther in. It's it's awesome in <clears> games <throat> like this and games like this. I'm not gonna say it anymore because I don't want to spoil the list. But it's stuff like this that's making me not run and jump. To Red Dead because I'm getting yes. sucked into games like this, <clears throat> and I'm getting sucked into the point and click game that I was playing. So, 
Cool. I'm glad. But I like it a lot so far, man. Like, I, I like instantly. I told you Ben fucking yeah. emptied out in one night, yeah. right? After he bought it. Oh, yeah. I mean, I knew, I knew he was going to. I, I, I saw the trailer for that game, and I thought Ben immediately. Yeah. You know how much he likes Ninja Gaiden, so... And the references they made, like it's it's good shit, man. It's Joe Gaiden. Yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a joke later that is so good that I can't say. I'm excited okay. to get to it. Um, all right, my number three, and I feel like this might end up being higher on my list if I had completed more of it, is Marvel's Spider-Man, is number three on my list. Um, the voice acting. How far did you get? <clears throat> uh, let's see. I okay. So I think I'm about a third of the way through the story. Um, Osborne just came and took all the shit from the lab. Oh shit! You're just there. It's about a third through. I looked it up. It's about a third through. I, I, oh, <clears throat> but man. keep in mind, this is the opposite of Red Dead, to where I didn't want to do any of the side stuff because right. the story was so engaging. Right. The story is That's true. so That's true. engaging That's true, yeah. in Spider-Man that it made me want to do the side stuff because yeah. this is not. All right, guys, let's do this one more time for the people in the back. I'm Peter Parker. Yeah. I got bit by a radioactive spider. It doesn't do the origin story. It starts... It just throws you in. And it starts after he's graduated college, after he's already working in a lab, after he's... So it does all that. But then there's stuff around the world that you find, backpacks and other things that have things. And it's like, oh, this is from that time where blah, 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 blah. And it, it's done so well and written so well and about... <clears throat> 10 backpacks in I was like why the fuck does Peter Parker have so many backpacks and it just and makes then a, sense <laughs> and then a few like a few times later there's just a line where he says I'm glad I won that lifetime supply of backpacks and I'm like you motherfuckers you got me because I was just wondering why he had so damn many and it's very comic booky and very <clears throat> I won't say cheesy it's, it's campy it's a comic book and it's a comic book come to life in like the best way possible um, this is where I was going to talk about. So I have not finished the game. And I, I get oh, really quick. I get what you're saying though, because yeah, when I first played it the first time, I wanted to do all that side stuff too. Yeah. And it took me a while even before I got to the main story because yeah. I wanted to find all the backpacks, take all the pictures. And <clears throat> I did. Yeah. So I did the backpacks and the pictures, and then seeing that list and knowing that more stuff like that is going to unlock for me to do. Yes. I just got so fucking excited. Yeah. I've been doing the side quests as like the actual quests, not the crimes. But the side quests as they pop up, um, like the one where the girl's bird watching and she sees yeah, shit, yeah. and then you gotta go do that. Like those side quests, I'm doing right away as soon as I see them on the map pop up. And they add to the character of this particular Peter Parker. Yeah. And knowing, so this is a game that uh, I listen to the Giant Bomb Game of the Year stuff, and I try not to listen to stuff when they talk about spoilers uh, for stories that I haven't finished or that I'm in the process of playing, unless I'm just not gonna get to it. But they talked about Spider-Man and they talked about the story and where it goes and how it ends. And instead of being like, oh, man, so, now I know what happens. I'm like, do you have it spoiled? Fuck, I need to get back in and finish this fucking game. Oh, so <clears throat> they didn't spoil it for you. No, they did. But it's, o- it's okay. It's okay, though, Rick. Because they didn't, they, like, I know where it goes. But the way that this game is made... For me, it's how does it get there? Okay. How, how am I... Because I know there's a big fucking moment that happens in this game. I and I need to know how the fuck we get there and why it happens. And it, I mean, it, it, to me, I think that kind of sucks, too, <clears throat> at the same time. But I understand because there's sometimes there are some movies where like I get, I get told what the ending is. I'm like, I still want to watch it anyways, you yeah. know? And um, <clears throat> I think, yeah, so I kind of get it. But at the same time, it's like... For, for, for a movie. For a game like Spider-Man, it's like... I thought that would have been more genuine. I, um, uh, Red Dead. <clears throat> I, I knew... Again, I knew the ending of Red Dead Redemption 2 because of the way Red Dead Redemption 1 story goes. Mm-hmm. Not I didn't know specifics, but I knew something major had to happen. Okay. So I knew. And then... So I knowing... Kind of knowing the finish to the match, right. I want to know how they get there. All right. And how they how they suck me in, and boy, am I fucking sucked into Spider Man. I'm, I'm still glad you're sucked <clears> in, <throat> even though all that. Rick's hoping that by the end of it, you're sucked off too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so going into watching into the Spider Verse, one of the Spider Men uh, has a story arc, and immediately I was like, Oh my God, is that the story that they're telling in the video game? Um, 
And in when you find in, in the end of the Spider Verse, when you get to the wherever all the suits are, the suit yeah. from the video game is there. And I was like, Ugh. like I just got stupid excited and geeked out over little things in that movie because of what I know about the game. Yeah. And what I know about Spider Man in general. So number three is Spider Man. It might have been higher on my list, but it would have been hard to supplant my two and ones. But I really think that if I finished the game, even I though so I know too. where it goes, I think I would have sat here and would have been like, got to five and four, and then been like, my number one game is this, my number one game is that one, and like I would have had three number ones. Yeah. <clears throat> All right. Uh, my number three. Spider-Man. I mean, that would Spider-Man. Blow that <laughs> uh, it's Florence. Yeah! What do you mean it's Florence? Really? Fuck yeah, Ray. You straight up played that and said it's not on your list. <laughs> or maybe I lied. I'm, I'm over it. He totally it. lied to me, <laughs> too. I'm fucking over it. Yeah, but you had no reason to lie to me about it. You're just like, oh, man, like, well, I wasn't that good. Well, you wouldn't want to know if it was on his list for real. I know, but he said no, it. He was volunteering. You want to know why? It wasn't actually good. I, it's lost all credibility <laughs> with me entirely. Why is it not I, I played it twice. <clears throat> okay. Oh, you did? See, yeah. I haven't done that. And uh, playing it the second time. Why'd you play it again? Because honestly, the first time when I played it, you kept talking, you kept putting it up on here and here, mm-hmm. and I'm like, all right, well, I don't play it, whatever. Yeah. And then I played it, I'm like, yeah, it was, it was all right, it was good. And I'm like, you know what, I'm going to play it again. I think I think I kind of put too much of like that negative mic yeah. sometimes does. Yeah. I'm going to do it again. <laughs> so you played it again. So I played it again, and I'm like, all right, like this is pretty innovative as far as like the conversations and like putting things together and like the paintings and like it's it just it just started clicking on me and the story I spent so much stupid fucking time on those paintings Rick <laughs> like just, it's not happening. it's not even funny dude the half of the time I played that I played that game I was like no she wouldn't do the paintings like this and I would erase it and start over again and like I don't know, man. Because I definitely rushed it the first time I played it. Uh-huh. Um, that's why I finished so quickly. And then it's just the second time around, I was like, all right, let's take off the so negative. Like the, let's take off the mic glasses, so to speak. <laughs> and, um, and it's good. It, 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 was, it, was our, it was still there's, good. There's, I'm still not saying it's going to be my number one or it's There's two moments in that game but, where I audibly went oh no 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 and got like a real bad like feeling of anxiety with what i was trying to do in the game and trying to fix it and there's there's one thing you just can't fucking fix and i'm getting emotional about it right now i and still don't i still is, want to say it, it, it emotionally dude got me it is so good but it, it was still it was still on the list <sighs> But it didn't. It didn't. I don't think it emotionally hit me as most people. Yeah. Did. Okay. But um, fair enough. Uh, the, the second play though, um, without the hater glasses on, <laughs> was. Come was back, different. Bryce. I need to know what your number three is. It's it's <clears> not <throat> a knock on the game at all. I want to say that, but I I just I, it's it's your ordering that I take issue with. You went from saying this won't make my list. To not only does it make your list, but higher than Pokemon! <laughs> Bullshit! No way! There's no fucking way! You're so... He does this to piss me off. You <laughs> like Florence better than fucking Pokemon on Switch? Yeah. There's no way. I don't buy it. His li- Rick's lists are bullshit. Because technically, I've already played There's this no Pokemon. Way. There's yeah. no fucking way. That's why. There's technically, no I've already played this Pokemon. It's yeah. bullshit. It's different enough. Which, There's no way. I don't. It's I'm, I'm shit. so glad that you liked it that much, man. And it, I had to take <clears> the <throat> second plane because if because I did tell him like oh, this is probably not gonna make my list because I the first time I played it I rushed through it. Yeah. The okay. He the, had nothing good to say about it either. I'm just gonna put him on blast. Like I don't know. He's like I don't know what Mike's talking about. Like my game's not that special. Blah blah. blah. Whole thing. And now not only does it make <laughs> his list, it surpasses <laughs> one of his most anticipated games of the year. So my anticipated game is the actual Pokemon that's coming out for the Switch. No, at of the this. year. Of the year. You were looking forward to oh, that. Oh, yeah, I was looking forward exactly. to that. Exactly. I, I call, I'm i sorry. No, I call it bullshit. My number three is Celeste. Okay. I'm done. Move on. <laughs> Come on. I'm irritated. I decided to fucking call bullshit. 
I call bullshit on it. I, I like Celeste a lot. I think Celeste is fun. I put more time in it. I don't know if Messenger would go go ahead of it or not, uh-huh. but I just the music, the environment, the game's fun. Yeah. I bottom line I put more time in it than the messenger. I don't know if they would have flip flopped. Again, I wish I had more time into it uh, than I put into it. Then I I wish I'd put more time into the, all these fucking games right, that came out right, this right, year. Right. But <clears throat> if I had to pick right now, I like Celeste a little bit more. Yeah. Just because it keeps surprising me. I think the messenger <clears throat> will do that too. I think Celeste makes my top ten. Ah, so you're doing a Rick now. <laughs> now, now I Dude, know it's not in the top no, There's no way it was going to be. Yeah, I want her to. There's no yeah, fucking way. I, I feel like it should be higher, but whatever. But that's my number three. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yeah. I thought that would have been higher for you. I think it, I think it would have been if he had, Just like you said, if he, had, last time. if he had more time in it, I think it probably would have been a lot higher. You thought it would be higher for me? Yeah. yeah. Just because I already talked about it in the last episode. No. So, number two. <laughs> I can't. I can't. Number two is The know. Messenger. <laughs> okay. Um, like, I, we talked a little bit about it earlier when you brought it up. Um, it is one of the, like, okay, so it's so weird that I felt this way in movies and in video games. Like, this is one of those games where I haven't felt this way after playing a game since I was a little kid and experiencing a game like this for the first time. Mm-hmm. Um, like, there's a lot of games. Like, The Last of Us is a fucking amazing game and made me feel certain ways. You know, Uncharted franchise, um, <clears throat> Detroit, and the other Quantic Dream stuff. But, like, those made me feel ways as an adult and made me feel like, man, this is, this is so good. This is a great story. The Messenger made me feel like a kid again with its mechanics its style, its story, and the way it's written, the way it's told. Like, you can just not engage with the shopkeeper and probably make it through the game with just your base abilities, but you never get any of the fun story that way. So every time I got to a shop, I would go in there and I would exhaust every story he had to tell. And the yeah. stories are so fucking good. The cabinet? Good. Yeah. yeah. Hey, don't touch that. I kept doing it. I'm going to tell a long yeah. story. I'm like, bitch, do it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I, uh, the messenger is my number two game of the year. Um, for my money, it was like mechanically the best game I played this year. Mechanically. Like there was a point with my top five where I was like, you know, I could break these down and have these all be number ones and say, this was my number one because of story. And this is my number one because of this. And my number one... Be- like, But I didn't want to do that. Because mm. you know how I like forcing myself to do things like this. Right. And make a list. Uh, and be definitive for now at this point. And uh, yeah, The Messenger is like... Man. it's It scratches an itch that I didn't know was... Similar to Odyssey last year. Well, earlier in 2018 when I played it finally... Because I played through a, like basically all of Odyssey in January of 2018. Mario Odyssey. Mm-hmm. Um, <clears throat> and that game scratched an itch that I didn't even know I had. And The Messenger did the same thing for me. It scratched an itch that I didn't even I wasn't even aware was there. And so yeah, The Messenger is my number two. And it's a great game. <sighs> more games need to be like that. You should play Celeste and The Messenger, Rick. Which number two? And then rate them both higher than Pokemon. <laughs> What's your number two, Rick? All right, my number two is no. <laughs> <laughs> it's Detroit. Detroit, okay. Yeah, Detroit Become Human. Um, that was going to be your number one before Spider Man. It was, yeah. Um, Detroit Become Human basically has a lot of story and a lot of movie action. Yeah. Um, I liked it a lot. Uh, the, the, the storytelling is amazing. Um, it would have been, like I said, it would have been my number one. Um, Without Spider-Man? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's kind of obvious. Well, yeah. Um, Dude, you did everything that game has to, yeah. for you to do. Like, there was no way. But, uh, but yeah, uh, I liked the characters in it. I tried to, uh, kept everyone alive. Uh-huh. Uh, Same here. Second time around, I started killing Connor just oh, to see what happens. What happens, yeah. Um, like, I didn't save, uh... What's his face when he fell over? Hank. Hank. Yeah. I did just kept the second I did time. That, the second time. I did that the first time. Oh, you left him the first yeah. time. Yeah. Oh. And he fucking comes and he punches you in the face yeah. <laughs> and like berates you for all you care about is getting your job. I was like, oh my god, Hank, I'm sorry, but there was no option for me to yeah. apologize. <laughs> like, no, I'm sorry. And I spent the rest of the game making it up to Hank. Yeah. It's so I, weird, I, right? I tried, that a I, game makes you. Yeah. yeah. No, uh, I can't do that. 
I mean, I didn't do that, but I know what you mean. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, it's just I just love the different stories you can get out of the yeah. different paths you take, and that's just something I really like about video games. This is what also I liked about uh, Bandersnatch too, mm-hmm. um, is that you can do all kinds of different things. Yeah, he's a pretty good Doctor Who. Huh? He's a pretty good Doctor Who. No, I'm not talking about <laughs> you know, talking about the film from Black Mirror. I know. I did that to lighten the mood for Bryce. He's very upset with you. I'm not. I just I don't know. So yeah, you there's a lot of different ways to go, and that's and that's what, one of the things that I like about Quantic Dream games. <clears throat> um, it's just different outcomes that can happen. Yeah, and that's my number two. My number two is Detroit Become Human. Ah, oh, I know, I know what one is, but that's awesome. I'm glad yeah, it's number well, two. Yeah. My number one is probably obvious, and Last Rick just doesn't remember, but so my number one's probably is one. But I'm but, gonna say that my prediction about. Four months ago was going to be correct, by the way, about the show's game of the year. But yeah. Okay. Uh, That's funny. <laughs> when, you, when you said that? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I'll wait before. I'll wait until I find out. Okay. Uh, I, for some reason, was never as excited as you two were about this game. Right. I don't know if I just... Uh, and Cheesy in the chat said earlier, like, if Bryce, if you like point and click, uh, you'd love... The, uh, what is it? Wolf Among Us? Yeah. Mm. Um, and maybe I would, but I know that's Telltale, right? Mm-hmm. And maybe it's a little bit different, but like, I'm not a big fan of Telltale spin on that joke. To me, that isn't the games that I the, grew up on. The thing on. I know about Wolf Among Us is it is a detective story right. to begin with. Yeah. So there's inherently more exploration and discoverable stuff. Yeah. And, and my, I think that might... And maybe... That Maybe. might help it, help it for you. Right, and my my brother uh, really liked that game too a lot, and he like he like I have my love for those games because I watched him play those games right, a lot. Right, right. So, um, Detroit Become Human, I think I was just like, I mean, obviously I've loved every like I've loved. Uh, I'm, Heavy like, rain. I'm so fucked up. Heavy Rain, Beyond Two Souls, Beyond Two Souls. Like I, I've liked everything I've played from them. But I just, I was just kind of like, I just didn't think I was in the headspace to want to like, do I really want to play this thing where I got to press the button at a certain time? That's why I was relieved that I didn't have a lot. in a similar mindset where I was like, okay, how are they going to do this a third time and make me feel different? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> so I was relieved, didn't have a lot of that, like, do this stuff real quickly. Or even still, I'm like, I don't know that I feel like playing this thing. that, that it, it, it is a game, but essentially, you know, sometimes it could be like, okay, well, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm going through the motions. I'm doing this. Got to do that. Uh but then once I played it, you know, like, which I don't know, I don't know that I was going to ever go out and buy it. And I didn't even ask Rick, hey, can I borrow it? And then he, like, when you, he yeah. lent it to me uh, uh, after you were just going to get it through Redbox. And I'm like, you know, and then I think I had it for a week and I let it sit there. Then I finally played it. And once I started playing it, I got really into it. Yeah. Uh, and liked it a lot. None of these games, for some reason, and so I'm not going to the games at all, but like, because I think I'm like this in general. Like, I, I never had a desire. Like, once I was done, I was done. Right. I don't feel like I need to go back and see what happens when I do this. Yeah. If anything, I'd rather look that up on YouTube if mm-hmm. there's an itch that I need to scratch enough. I don't feel like I need to do it. That's cool that you do. I think this one is the most accessible version of that, though, because you can yeah. really just play from a certain right. sequence forward and, that, and then say, no, 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 don't override my save. Yeah. I like where it went. Did you end up popping it back in and like looking since you hadn't really seen the choices? No, no. Okay. So anyways, that's my number two. Um, I don't know. I mean, it, it was it was fun. The game, I don't want to say it surprised me, but it surprised me in the sense that I, for some reason, wasn't that excited. I don't know why. I had no reason not to be, but yeah. it's just where I was. Um, real quick, I want to bring up something at the game that happens at the after the game's over. Um, your menu screen. You have that nice conversation. Oh, And yeah. then you can, like, set her free. Uh, did you guys set her free? I'm trying to remember what yeah, I, I set her free. Yeah, me too. And then it's the home screen, like when you get the home screen. Home screen I'm pretty sure I probably <laughs> did. So, Isn't that the creepiest home screen ever? Yeah, it, but in, a, in the best yeah. kind of way. Yeah. Um, then I was like, ah, this is a video game. I'm going to exit and load it back up and watch her be there. And I loaded it back up and she wasn't there. And I was like, oh. And I kind of got sad <laughs> for a second. You missed her. Yeah, I did. I fucking missed her. Yeah. But yeah, it's, it's such a rad game, dude. Okay. It's a good game. Number one. No surprise or shock to anybody is Paladins. Um, somebody who's not a multiplayer shooter guy or a competitive shooter guy. Um, this happened to me with Overwatch also two years ago. 
And it just was a game, Overwatch was a game that just kind of sucked me in and felt great and <laughs> felt positive. Um, and yes, I know this game didn't technically come out this year. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. But it came out on... And um, here's, here's how I justified it. Because there was a point where I took this completely off my list because of that whole, well, it didn't come out this year. Mm -hmm. I didn't know a fucking thing about this game. Hadn't heard the name. Didn't know what it was about. Until I saw it pop up in the Switch store for like the Founders Pack thing. Yeah. And it was like 40 bucks and you can get the Founders Pack or whatever. And I was like, hmm. And I watched the video, the, the trailer in the store. And I was like, ah, this is like Overwatch Lite. I've already, I already spent money on played Overwatch. And feel like I probably got my fill. And just kind of, and I'd never heard about Paladins before that. And I just kind of kept my eye on it. And I, was, and I looked it up and I was like, oh, it's fucking free to play everywhere else? Well... I'm not going to get it on PS4. Like, if I'm going to play on PS, play something on PS4, I'm going to play something on PS4. I'm not going to play a competitive multiplayer shooter, you know? Mm -hmm. And just kind of, I'm like, well, maybe it'll eventually go free to play on Switch. That'd be cool. And I think maybe about two months later or a month later, they're like, hey, it's free. Founders Pack is gone. Now it's free to play on Switch. And so I was like, well, all right, it's free now. I'll download it and give it a shot. I downloaded it. Found a character that I thought I was going to fall in love with. And I was like, oh, okay, he's kind of quick. He's got two guns. It's not auto. It's it's um, semi-automatic, so I have to keep... Oh, you know, it's, okay, he feels great. And I even said to you, oh, I think I found my main. This is awesome. I don't even fucking use that guy anymore. <laughs> um, he's com it, He may as well not exist. But unlike Overwatch, and I've said it a hundred times on this show, and I'm going to say it again since that's the whole point of this show, I found a character in every class that I can legitimately main and do damage with, and be effective on my team with. And I never found a second character, let alone four characters in Overwatch, that I can play as. So if I get into a game, and somebody's picked my healer, I don't get upset. Because there's a tank character I can play as. Mm -hmm. But if somebody picks my healer, and my tank, then there's a flank character I can play as, or a damage character I can play as. So like... Before, on Overwatch, it was a mad dash to get to my character before anybody else. Now I kind of sit there and wait and go, well, what role do we need filled? Because I can do something in every field, in every role. Yeah, that's and a good way to play. it feels so good to not have to make a mad dash for my character because there's four characters I can legitimately main. Mm -hmm. And in half the time with the game, I've put double the amount of hours into Paladins that I did Overwatch. And I still play two or three times a week. And for <laughs> three or four hours at a time. And there's no way this couldn't be my number one. No <laughs> fucking way. You know what's funny? was surprised. You know what's funny? <laughs> it's funny that, like, I kind of... I don't know what happened. Like, I I forgot. I didn't saw that I forgot that you were on your number one. But for some reason, Paladins, even though we were joking about it, slipped my mind. I was like, oh, shit. He hasn't listed that yet. So I think I'm more yeah. surprised, but maybe not, because you sort of hinted that there's a yeah. game that didn't make your top five at all. But all right, we'll find out why soon. Spider-Man. It's fantastic, dude. It's, it's, it's so good. It's, it's, so, it's, it's, it's fantastic. It's amazing. amazing. It's spectacular. <laughs> it's the ultimate Spider-Man yeah. that I've wanted out of a movie. <laughs> yeah, it's, oh, it's so good, man. Just swinging around that city. And it's I'll so say it again. Like, this is the Spider-Man movie we should have got instead of Homecoming. This is what Spider-Man is about. This yeah. this game is what Spider-Man is. And you liked Homecoming, which is like you didn't love it, but I you loved liked it. it. I, I liked it, but like he was it, this like he was in the minority. Yeah. yeah. It seemed like other people liked it oh, way yeah. more than Rick. For sure. Oh yeah. And like if this is what we got out of the movie, like, oh my god, this would have been my yeah. my favorite movie of the year or whatever it was. Yeah, Spider-Man dude. <clears throat> so but yeah, that, that's exactly what Spider-Man is. It's exactly what Spider-Man's supposed to be. And it's exactly what we should have gotten, um, story wise. Which yeah. is, it's it's perfect. It's perfect yeah. game. I love the stuff with him and Octavius. Yeah, I like the stuff. The little bit you've come into contact with Norman Osborn for me so far. I know that gets deeper as yeah. the game goes on. Um, <clears throat> the stuff with Mary Jane. Yeah. The cameo by Stan Lee made me fucking cry because I totally I was like. Like, yeah. Not that I didn't think he'd have a cameo in it, but I started playing it like maybe a month after Stan I didn't, passed I didn't, away. I didn't even know. Yeah. I, didn't, I figured I, he'd I, be I, I didn't even think about that, to be honest. I didn't, like, I didn't even register like, oh, I don't think I would have thought that either. Yeah, so when I saw him, I was like, <clears throat> yeah. Oh. You hear his voice before you see him, and it's like, yeah. oh my god. And then, yeah, going along with that, his cameo in Into the Spider-Verse was so good. And that, again, mm -hmm. I was like, oh, 
Look at points. No refunds. Yeah. <laughs> like, it always fits. Yeah. No refunds. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that Spider-Man game is something special, man. It yeah. is something special. Bryce? Uh, my number one, and I'm going to call it the people's number one, because if I've looked correctly on the chat, it's been all of their number ones too, but my number one is God of War. Mm-hmm. I never wavered once. It was my number one. Yeah. It never, nothing ever was going to knock it off. That was my number one game. I yeah. love the world. I love uh, the gameplay. I love the story. There is more for me to do in that game, and I probably will go back to that game. Like, not not that it would be me replaying stuff, but there's still more for me to do in that world. Uh so yeah, I, like I said, I'm surprised, but I'm not surprised because I, I kind of got wind or I could tell that you didn't like it as much as Ben or I did, but I'm shocked it didn't make your top five oh, at so all. so it's not even a matter of me not liking it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I really like the world and um, I talked for, you know, endlessly with you about the characters that I've come into contact with and mm-hmm. how much I, you know, love these characters in my limited interactions with them so far, how long I just row around in the boat to hear stories and yeah. it's... Uh, and f- finally starting to engage with the side quests and all the stuff that that brings out. And um, because at first I was like, I'll just mainline the story, fuck it. And then I was like, mm, but I really like Sindri and I really mm. like these other characters. Let me let me go do some stuff for them. Yeah. And uh, it made me. <clears throat> so the only. <clears throat> There's nothing wrong with this game, but nothing pulled me or compelled me to keep going. Other than, this shit's really good, I should probably keep going. But with all the other games on my list, I felt like a hankering to continue. And I'm not sure why God of War didn't do that for me. Um, But similar to uh, Red Dead, even though I finished it. like me with Red Dead, I guess, right now. Yeah, yeah. So similar to me with Red Dead, even though I didn't know any spoilers about Red Dead before I finished it, other than like the one I figured was a spoiler. Mm Mm-hmm. Um, and then the way I feel about Spider-Man, hearing uh, Dan Reichert talk about God of War on the Giant Bomb stuff makes me want to go back and finish that game. Like, he talks about a moment in that game where I'm like, I need to experience that fucking moment. And he talks about a story beat in that game where I'm like, fuck, I need to... So, like, I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish this game. And I'm not sure when it's going to be. But it'll probably relatively probably be relatively soon because I've kind of other than Spider Man I've kind of wrapped everything up I need to wrap up yeah you know exception of like Celeste but that's something I kind of plug away at you know that's in right, small yeah. increments especially that that game you can literally save at any point yeah my game is built for the Switch in the yeah. sense of like oh I'm waiting in line I could try this for okay fuck yeah. it shut it off so uh, but yeah like and this is not a knock on the game it just didn't hit me the way it hit other people uh, or like that's fair. and, and kind of like. It didn't get that rope around me to pull me through. Yeah. Even as much as I love the world and the characters and the story that's being told, like, it just didn't... I wasn't compelled to keep going. For me, it was the first video game, like, since, like, Uncharted. Really? Okay. That, like, really just sucked me into, like, man, this is... I fucking... And I haven't played any other God of War, so it's my first... It's my first venture into any God of War, and I know this is very... It's pretty different, or yeah. fairly different, but... I just I think it's fucking good. Yeah. I, I I think Rick would actually like it a lot too, especially how Rick likes to play games where he gets his aggression out. Yeah. I prefer getting my I prefer getting my aggression out by yelling at him about his list <laughs> every year. Uh, in fact, I can't wait to go back. I want to hear my Conrad Thompson. <laughs> and I was not even what I was going for. I was literally just like, oh god. But anyways, uh, God of War is it's just yeah. That's how I felt, man. I just like I I just I had to keep playing, and I I wanted to do everything. I wanted to go around every corner. I wanted to collect everything. I wanted to open up every pathway. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, eventually what happened was that, like I said, I I, I started something where I'm just kind of like, this isn't really going to be the end, is it? Even though I kind of knew it's what we were building right, towards. Right, but right. I'm just kind of like, eh, I don't think it's going to be. And then credits rolled. And yeah. there's plenty more to fucking do. But I was like, oh, okay. Because like, I was kind of trying to avoid that. And I wanted to complete all this other stuff first. But it's not a total loss because I could easily go back in there and it's still going to feel like I'm just chilling in that world. I'm on the boat. I'm yeah. hearing more stories from Sindri and that's what I'm going to do. Mm-hmm. I eventually am definitely planning on doing that. Cool. I liked, I liked what I played, but I think I'll... Uh, I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it when I finish it. Yeah, I'm sure you will too. But... I'll be curious if it knocks anything out. But Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it could, man. Like When you gave Red Dead 5... There was a little part of like, oh, maybe you got a world before, mm-hmm. you know? And then there's a, a second where I completely lost my head 
when you predicted what game of the year is going to be, and like I remember you hinted you like it's going to be Detroit, and I was yeah. like it's not going to be that's not going to be mine. <laughs> you know what I mean? Uh, that's what I was thinking in my head the whole time. But there was a part of me that, that forgot about Paladins. I'm like, holy fuck, did Mike like? Did Mike? I hate doing this when it's not resting. Did Mike kayfabe me <laughs> and like that way more than yeah. he's let on, and that's his number one game? But I forgot about Paladins. Yeah. Um. So, uh, do you have honorable mentions or? Um, well, so I, I, I guess, sure, I do. Okay, yeah, I, I absolutely have an honorable mention. The Unavowed, you heard me talking about that, yeah. that game. I think someone from Giant Bomb was who yeah, was playing Vinny. it. Yeah, Vinny. Vinny was playing it. That was a fun game. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I like Unforeseen Incidents better so far because that's, okay. that's more. The Unavowed is kind of like that adventure game, but it's a little different. And then, uh... I guess honorable or whatever you want. I don't know if I want to say honorable, but I've refused to rate them because I didn't give them enough time. Mm -hmm. But Red Dead Redemption 2 and South Park The Fractured Butthole. I forgot that came out this year, and it did. That was this year, huh? Yep. Okay. I thought that was last year. Unless the list I looked at was wrong. It came out this year on Switch. Mm, I'm pretty sure it came out this year. Unless, like I said, the list I looked at was wrong. Or maybe it was for Switch. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't have any. No? Okay. Um, <laughs> so, um, there was a minute there where Florence was okay, number yeah. one. October. So, yeah. I, I probably saw for Switch. So, anyways, but still, that's a game that I would have liked to put more time yeah. in. Because I think that was again, on my year, list last year. Again, year doesn't matter. But, yeah. Um, Florence was in the number five spot above Red Dead for uh, a little bit after I finished it. Um, but then I kind of went back into that world of Red Dead and remembered, oh, yeah, this story. Um, it's hilarious. I know you played more games, but you love Florence. Didn't even make his top five. Um, it's on yours. Yes. I don't. I don't want to get too deep into it again because I talked about it when Rick brought it up. Because I'll inevitably Greg Miller all over the place yeah, again. Yeah, started. And it is. Uh, it's fantastic. Um, yeah, there's like three or four sequences in that game where you just you feel helpless. Um, I'll give it a go, but I'm reluctant to yeah. have those feelings. There's, there's one part where you have to do something that just feels fucking terrible. Um, as a person, like, it's just one of those things where like, fuck, am I really fucking, oh man, this is crazy. Um, but Florence is my biggest surprise of the year uh, because I kept hearing Greg Miller talk about it and I heard other mm. people talk about it. And then I mentioned to you that um, I heard Vinny Caravella talking about it on the best moment or sequence uh, category and I stopped listening because he made me want to go play it and I went and played it and I went back and listened to it and like felt exactly the same way he felt and like there's just an utter feeling of helplessness in so much of that game you know what it also felt like it also felt like you were actually playing a comic book yeah the like way an interactive the way structure comic book. yeah, yeah. Um, the other honorable mentions on here uh, I want to say Bloodstained Curse of the Moon is so fucking fantastic and until later in the year when I ended up resubscribing to Gamefly to play other games like Detroit. <coughs> and, um, you know, I ended up renting other games through there. That God of War was on there. Uh, and, I, and I ended up... It's funny, I thought that was going to be the catalyst for me to have a bigger list this year. Mm -hmm. But it ended up being just games coming out and games being on sale and me picking them up and loving them. Um, but yeah, uh, Bloodstained Curse of the Moon came out of fucking nowhere for me, man. And like... Before I played Spider-Man and before I played Detroit and before Red Dead, like Bloodstained was up there with the messenger because it felt so refreshing and so like an old shoe. What were you playing that time. on? Switch. Switch. Yeah. Perfect for format for that game. Mm. Um, it's kind of like a Castlevania sort of like game, kind of, right? Yeah, basically. It's okay. basically uh, Castlevania 3 Dracula's Curse, I think is what that game's called. Yeah. But it's basically that exact game. Uh, done by Inti Creates, who makes some amazing shit. Um, Super Mario Party. I never thought of Super Mario... That would have made my top ten, Super Mario Party. Really? Never would have thought... It is Dracula's Curse. In my life, that a Mario Party game would be anywhere on a favorite games of the year list. Not because they're not fun, but because inherently the minigames feel terrible and all the bullshit that happens to where mm. you can be in the lead and lose. This is the first time in the 11 games that have come out where the mini games feel good, even with a shitty little Joy-Con sideways. Yeah, if they feel good, 
And when the bullshit happens at the end, instead of dreading it, I'm like, oh yeah, here it comes. Like it's, and it's all because the game mechanics themselves feel better leading up to that. That's awesome. So like, when they give out the store, the star who for who won the most mini games, I don't feel like, well, if these mini games fucking worked, it would have been me. I feel like, damn, they were just better than me this yeah. time. Yeah. But yeah, Mario Party. Um, <clears throat> we talked about God of War when you brought it up, so I don't really mm-hmm. need to mention that because that was. Uh, on that list and an honorable mention I think Celeste cracks 10 or 11 it's up there it's one of those things that might grow higher yeah the more you the more I play it but I just don't think it would crack that top five and and realistically I don't believe it would go above Florence but it could it could Uh, but those are my honorable mentions and other games I've played this year and this like the other big surprise for me was how much I really liked the beginning of Starlink when I started playing it last week yeah it's a good game you know I looked into it and it's not on sale anymore well, the base game is right now for 30 bucks, but not the deluxe edition that I got. <clears throat> uh, but yeah, that's my stuff. Uh, I love doing this show every every year with you guys. I love seeing how Rick can piss off Bryce. Um, it's not even his list. It's my list. <laughs> I know. That's what I love so much about it. That, that's You're missing the point. That's got nothing to do with, with it. Yeah. You're being mad. At, like, <laughs> oh, it's just the way you order it doesn't yeah. make any sense to me. Um, but I don't think we said it like out loud, but let's... The, show, the show's game of the year is Detroit. It was four for me and two for both of you. Yeah. And if we use our point system, it's got more points than Spider-Man did. The people's game of the year is God of War. Because Cheesy's got right, it number cheesy. one. Look, now you sound like me and Rick the year that uh, Saints Row the Third and Uncharted came out. When I was like, if you would have just played more Saints Row, <laughs> you would have had higher on your list. I'm, I'm not saying anything. <laughs> Lolo's got a number Lolo's one. Got a I'm just including the yeah. people. Yeah, but who the fuck are these people? No, I'm just kidding. I just said the people. <laughs> They're the people. Yeah. Um, that's, yeah, I'm glad people love that game as much as they do. 